From the dawn of man, indigenous people from every corner of the globe have spoken of things that have now been discounted as myth or legend. Things they saw, lived alongside by, were looked upon as deities or worshipped by gods. Things that present-day man refer to as entities, spirits, demons, cryptid creatures, extraterrestrials and much more. But sadly, modern man, science and society has discounted what our ancestors spoke of as legend and myths. But there are those of us that know what the ancient ones spoke of is the truth. Those of us who are obsessed with finding out the truth. This search for answers brings us into the world of the unknown and unexplained. It brings us on the trail, in search of living legends. Please join us tonight in another part of our journey to find these answers and bring the truth out into the light. Welcome and thank you for listening. Hey, welcome everyone to another edition of On the Trail in Search of Living Legends. I'm here with my partner and big brother, Nick. Nick, how's it going, man? What do we uh, man, what do we got going, for a guest tonight? It's going great. We got a uh, treat for the audience tonight. We have a cryptozoologist supreme, Sasquatchologist, and I and I hear a UFOologist too, Mr. Carter <laughs> Bouchard. How are you doing, right. Carter? What's I'm up, doing Carter? Great. I'm doing awesome. Really good seeing you. And you know, from what I uh, what I understand, you have another book out, which we're going to get into. Yep. Uh, go ahead, Jay. Take it from there. We'll we'll dive yeah, in. Yeah, well, I was lucky enough to receive a copy of one of Carter's. Uh, this is your second to newest one, right, Carter? Uh, that's the first uh, abduction book. Yes. Yeah. This, this you wrote the habituation one after this, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's my okay. fourth. This the the habituation is my fourth Sasquatch book. Right. 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 Okay. So I'm we got my abduction. Baptized by abduction, and Carter is going to tell us a little bit about the book and a little about what went on over that this looks crazy. Like an awfully thick book, huh? How thick is, is that? Three sixty six. Whoa, people! It's you've running. got a lot of a lot of information. To and no pictures. And no pictures, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's all print. <laughs> it's it's excellent, though. I can't believe. I just can't believe what you. Um, um, but I'll, I'll let you get into it. I'll let you get yeah. into it. But um, so Carter, uh, just tell tell for those uh, tuning in for the first time tonight. You just want to tell everyone a little a little bit about yourself. I mean, me and Nick are familiar, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I've I've been uh, researching uh, Sasquatch uh, for about 15, 16 years, uh, and uh, I've written four books on Sasquatch: all evidence of an enigma, one, two, three, and four. And, Excellent books, by the way. And oh, I want to you. tell everybody I have those three books, and I use it often as reference books. Yes. I go back Excellent. into them. There's a lot of stuff to garner mm -hmm. from that. Yeah. And, and and most of my stuff, you know, I get into the paranormal and the quantum science type of stuff because that's mm -hmm. what's going on. And right. a lot of my people who are habituation, when I say habituation, they have them living on their property and they interact with them either daily, yep. weekly, monthly, or yearly some for a generation or more. And so they're also experiencing the paranormal aspects. Right. Orbs uh, disappearing mm -hmm. right in front of them. Uh, yep. Mind speak, the, the same stuff that I've experienced. It's just, uh, you know, you got to wrap your head about it. You got to have an open mind. You don't have, you know, you do. all you got to do is just consider the stuff. You don't have to believe it. Just consider it. If it's not for you, we'll go on about your day. But, you know, at least have an open mind to go, well, you know, that, that might happen. You know, but if you just discount it across the board for no reason other than you just don't believe it, yeah. well, you're never going to enlighten yourself, you know. Carter, not, yeah. we don't need specific area. Just what state uh, are you doing your research in mainly? Well, like, where do you live? What state? Well, I, I live in Missouri. Missouri, okay. For BFRO, my four-state area uh, is Oklahoma, Arkansas, uh Missouri and Kansas. Those okay. are the four areas. I can be anywhere in those states within an hour. Oh, wow. where I'm at. So, 
those are the reports that I did my Sasquatch, but I've got people all over, you know, I mean, yeah. from all over the country. I've, I've had a hundred reports published to BFRO. So I get around, you know, but my sure. people reached out to me uh, because they realized they could talk to me without fear of ridicule. And that's why I, I'm getting people from all over the country, you know? Yeah. Just so Anything, my audience you know, knows, BFRO is Bigfoot Research Organization. Yeah, Bigfoot Field Research Organization. Field Research. Yeah. You know, Car Carter, you bring up a good point about, you know, uh, I won't talk too long. I know we want to get into the book, but, you know, Nick and I have discussed that's, you know, 10 years ago, if you would have told me about the orbs and the mind speak and all that, I would have said you were crazy. I thought they were some kind of mountain ape, you know, but since you know, the longer I've done this, the more weird stuff like that I've encountered. And now I'm floating in that direction, you know? So, and I'm sure a lot of other people know what I mean by that. You know, I know you do. <laughs> yeah. It just answers more questions than the ape only that that's, yep. that's it. You, you limited yourself so much with just, well, that oh. can't be, that, that's just a gorilla. They can't yep. do that. They don't have a language that it, that's just, you know, you have to broaden yourself, you know, right? At least to take it in and see if it fits you. But it answers so many more questions, you know. That that's sure. that's why I got into it, and it's really paying off because people are calling me out of nowhere. I just got a guy from Indiana, you know, from another, uh, and he's he's got Sasquatch and Dogman on his property. Wow. And I told him how to get rid of them or to slow it down. And he, right. I told him, put up some lights, put up some cameras, put up motion lights yep. and ask them to stop harassing. They were banging on the walls, looking in the windows. Oh. And it stopped. It stopped just that easy. And if I said something to somebody who doesn't believe they have any powers, that they're just dumb apes, if I go out there and tell them, just go out in your backyard, talk to them nicely. You're scaring my family and my newborn baby. Please stop that. Oh, yeah, right, dude. Uh-huh. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. you, you think I'm going to talk to a gorilla? Yeah. yeah. So just the fact that you have an open enough mind to consider that. I'll be darned. I just got off the phone with him about an hour ago. The activity stopped because he did what I just talked to them. Um, He's going, Really? I said, yeah. I mean, he's a young kid. He don't know anything. I mean, he has, other than knowing they exist, possibly he'd heard of them. He mo moved on to a property that had been uh, abandoned for 20 years. Well, uh, that's why they're all over the place, because they yeah. the had the run of that property. Yep, they sure did. Um, and possibly a dog man. You know, one of the photos is very compelling dog man wise. Wow. Yeah. Pretty bizarre. Yeah, so, for sure. For sure. So, yeah, so I wrote this book, my Baptized by Abduction. Yeah. <clears throat> I had a lot of turmoil when I wrote it, thinking, well, I'm a Sasquatch researcher, a cryptid researcher, and now I've been abducted by aliens. So book sales a little slow there, Mr. Carter. You try to get something else going on to get some more money in your pockets? You know, I mean, <laughs> that, that's what I thought would be <laughs> a lot of people. Oh, yeah, he's a Sasquatch guy. Now he's also been abducted by aliens. Uh huh. Yeah, but, but see, this is something that happened to me. It started when I was seven or eight, mm -hmm. best as I can tell. And so I did not find out. I had no idea. I did not find out. I'm 72. I will be 73 in September. I did not find out until 2004 wow. by accident that I had been abducted. Just think, you know, and you and Nick probably both have stories you tell, I do, of, of sure. stupid things you did as a kid that oh, should have yeah. got you killed, but didn't. We all yeah. have stories. And so I'm in sales, or I was, and so when you're trying to break the ice, talk to some new people, uh, sitting at a bar or whatever, a meeting, and you go, well, you know, when I was a kid, you know, me and my buddy were racing our bikes and uh, we ran a stop sign right in front of my house and this car just blew right by us, almost hit us. We could feel the wind. I don't know how it didn't hit us. I've told that story for 30, 40 years. 
It was just an icebreaker story, you know. Well, sure. I stuck my finger in a, a light socket one time. I should have been, you know, I mean, we all have those kind of stories, you know. Yeah. So it's just a conversational thing. Well, that really happened. And, you know, we really almost did get hit by a car, except it wasn't a car. It was a spacecraft. It was a UFO. It took me and my friend at the age of seven or eight in Dallas, Texas, into a craft. And they were doing things to him. I watched them working on him behind a screen that was kind of like cheesecloth. You could see through it and see mostly, but not everything. But the whole thing is, I've, I've been getting abducted since the age of eight. And the most recent time that they may have attempted it was... 2021 or two here at my house oh now most of everything so here's here's how i found out and th this is it's hilarious now uh, <laughs> when i think about this but my wife and i and another couple were sitting around our house 2002 2003 dallas texas you know i always thought i had a past life I thought I was a, you know, I thought I had a past life as a woman. I thought I was a girl or a woman when I was in a past life. And everybody, everybody thinks they may have had a past life. Sure. So we decided, <clears throat> the four of us, to look up for a hypnotic regressionist close by and see if we could make an appointment for the next day. And, you know, luckily I found one and she was about 20 miles east of uh, Kansas City. So we made an appointment and we drove out. It was that simple. It's a Saturday. It was a Friday night. We were sitting around Saturday. We drove out to her place. She has this big barn that was a studio. And we went inside. And she had a labyrinth and a maze also cut into her field. So you could walk around and meditate and become one with the, the landscape and, and the vibes and all that stuff. So anyway, kind of kind of ground ground yourself, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Right. So all four of us are in the barn. And um, we're all sitting on hay bales and or chairs. You had your choice. And so we're watching each other get taken under, and she's mm -hmm. recording it. So I've got all my tapes. Wow. So, so my wife could not be hypnotized because she has control issues. Now, that's a very mm -hmm. typical thing with hypnosis. If anybody's ever been hypnotized, you'll recognize that. Uh, that you know, If you have control issues, you just can't go under because you don't no. trust what's going to happen. Yeah. Not a big deal. Uh, my the the husband of my other friend he went under and he discovered he had been alive during the Atlantean days. He was oh one of the God. ruling. He was in the ruling class. He was looking down at himself. All, he was he was looking at the robes he was wearing. He was very high up in the royalty there, and he was in the ruling family. And he was looking at these robes. Says, oh my God, they're so bright! I, you know, he was describing. And so his wife went under, she's an old friend of mine, and she had two past lives. She found out. She found out she was a, an Indian medicine man that was helping her tribe die because they had no medicine. They had some disease uh, caught from the white man, mm -hmm. and uh, they were all dying. She had no medicine, so she was just making them comfortable. Uh, <clears throat> and then she discovered she was also a fisherman in the 1920s in the North Atlantic and those big bad you know seas they have and she was a fisherman she was looking at her yellow slicker she was wearing and all that really interesting sure. <clears throat> she was describing how she had to tie herself to the boat to not be washed over shore you know and they, they, the waves hit them so anyway so they get to me and it takes me a while to go under and then when I finally go under I start sobbing hysterically, uncontrollably, and talking like a little 10-year-old kid. Oh, get away, get your hands off of me. So what are you doing? Where are we? Who are you? I was just freaking. And everybody there is freaking out, you know? And so, of course, they don't know what, what I'm doing. So I go through this abduction. That time when I mentioned that me and my friend were racing our bikes and we ran a stop sign and almost got hit by a car. Well, that car was not a car. It was a spacecraft. Wow. And it came down and took us on board. And I was inside. We were both still on our bikes in the craft. 
and we wow. were just looking around and we're just what where, what where are we what's going on what you know and then we started panicking you know and the next thing i remember i'm laying on a table and my friend craig is laying on a table but he's behind this kind of a cheesecloth scrim thing i could see uh -huh. A little bit better than a shadow. I could see what was going on. He was screaming bloody murder because, you know, stop, stop. Oh, God, it hurts. He was just screaming. I was going, what are they doing to him? And, you know, I was freaking out because he was freaking out. And I was next. I said, I'm not going in there. I'm, I'm not going in there. You, you know, what are you doing to him? You know? And so uh, that, that's kind of all I remember right now. But so fast forward, that was 2004. This happened when I, in about 1958 or nine, when I was mm. seven or eight. So I had been taken numerous times up until that time. I didn't know it until I got right. under these regressions. I've been taken under, uh, are, you, are you guys familiar with Dolores Cannon? I, I no, want to say I've heard that. I'm not familiar, but. Uh, John Mack. UFO guy. Uh, that sounds familiar. He's the Harvard professor that wrote two books. Okay, yeah. Uh, would he, and, would he have been Bud on Hopkins? Ancient, but uh, would he? Would either one of them have been on ancient aliens in the past? It, probably so. Okay, John yeah, was mysteriously run over by a car after his second book. Mm. Huh? Uh, in London, and mm. so. Uh, and Bud Hopkins, who's a very famous artist, but he, they wrote, they are the gods of re regression hypnosis to get facts. Dolores Cannon has been around forever, uh, and she passed away in 2014. Mm. Uh, but I went under one, two, three, uh, four different regressionists with and seven regressions. So I've been under seven times and i couldn't believe what i was hearing and i didn't believe it so what did i do i had all these tapes cassette tapes seven cassette tapes i put them in my closet and i, I said i'll just get back to them i, I don't even know why I, I think i was probably scared to yeah. find out what happened but i, I knew what happened but uh, I went under with Dolores Cannon in 2005, 2010. Uh, Dolores Cannon died in 2014. I went under with two of her students. Uh, actually, the other three women I went under were all her students. Mm -hmm. I went under with the last one in October of 2023. And that's why I decided I got to write this book. Yeah. Because each regressionist that I went under with corroborated what the previous one told me plus they opened up new doors mm -hmm. then once that was done it went on down the food chain so i said i'm going to go to dolores cannon i mean you, you you should look her up she is like more than world famous and she has written dozens and dozens of books uh, one of them is called convoluted universe series but anyway uh i was taken i don't know how many times I, I really don't. I can think of probably 10 or 12 events. So all these regressionists found out I had implants put in. I remember a serious nosebleed I had because mm. that implant failed. They shoved it up my nose. And so they sent a crew to come and take it out and or deactivate it and put a new one in. Wow. And so, uh, are either of you, uh, of you familiar with the term screen memories? No, not no, really. Be, no. yeah. uh, a lot of people had heard it. So, when you're abducted, and this, if you look, if you read any abduction tales or books, you'll hear screen memory. Screen memory is what they, the aliens, put in your head. Mm. So that when you remember an event that you're not supposed to remember, they don't want you to remember, you'll remember something else. So if you see a gray, the big eyes, yeah. you will remember an owl or a deer. Okay. To take you away from what really happened. Screen memory, you said? 
screen. Yeah. Yeah, screen memories. It, it, it's it, it's exactly what it says. They're screening what really happened. And so uh, when I went under, I was talking. So when you get hypnotized, you're talking to your super subconscious. Right. Or you're talking to the aliens through the hypnotist. It just depends on what comes through. Your subconscious, your super subconscious knows everything you have ever done, good, bad, or in the middle. Everything you've ever done in your entire life. It knows everything. Things you probably forgot. Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, you know, and, and so you can't get away from it. It's in there, but you have to unlock it. And most people right. can't unlock it. So, but the, when she took me under... I mean, I, I was I was taken to Saturn. Uh, they wanted to leave me on the rings of Saturn with old souls. I said, I don't want to be here. But the thing is, my buddy Craig and another buddy in my neighborhood, Gordon, we were taken many, many times. And it happened either at my house his house or this place we used to hang out, Joe's Creek and Castleman's Pond, Dallas, Texas. Yep. And we used to hunt and fish. Uh, we were taken from there a couple of times because we saw a craft and a being in a tree up above us. And here's another screen memory. Uh, when I heard, I saw Craig being worked on behind the screen, uh, I was given a screen memory of a fish hook. We used to go hunting at, uh, and fishing we, I, I, I was casting and I, I, I caught it on something and I couldn't, I was looking around and I hear this screaming and here's this fish hook in Craig's neck. And every time I'm jerking this fish hook, it's pulling his neck and he's screaming bloody murder. That never happened. That's wow. a screen memory for what they were doing to him in the craft. Ah, okay. I had a childhood dream, a reoccurring dream. I remember this very vividly of seeing these little gray robots walking down the hall <laughs> from the area of my parents' bedroom past my door where I shared a room with my brother in bunk beds. But they were like on escalator. They were kind of going down a little bit, but there were little bitty gray robots. What well, I now know they were grays. Right. Well, those grays were there. They're just the drones, the little three or four footers. They're just the drone, the robots, or the uh, their uh, you know their biological uh, entities. They're biological and organic. You know they okay. are half human, half made. The big tall grays that people have seen, which I have seen, are six foot, and they're a really big giant. Well, they gave me a screen memory of this gray alien, the big one that came and got me. Of my, it was supposed to be Aunt Jemima, but they screwed it up. It, it, sitting in this rocking chair in my bedroom. We never, number one, we never had a rocking chair in our bedroom. It was too small. It was me, my brother, a desk, a big chest of drawers, and a bunk beds. We, it wasn't a big room. There was never a rocking chair. It wouldn't fit, no way. But it was funny because they made Aunt Jemima kind of look like my grandmother. Uh, mm. The problem was she was white. She didn't have a do-rag, and she had glasses. I, when I saw this, I kept thinking, pancakes, pancakes. Aunt Jemima. That's yeah. Aunt, supposed to be Aunt Jemima, but it looked like my grandmother. And so it, <clears throat> it, was, uh, it was comical because when I'm talking to the aliens, when they're um, under, they go, you weren't supposed to remember that. How did you remember that? How do you know that? They would tell me, you weren't supposed to recall that. <laughs> and so when I would hit them with some things, well, I'm not sure, you, you know, we can't answer that exactly, but if it's your perception, it's quite possibly correct. They, they would jack with me every now and then. You know, they yeah. wouldn't tell me yes or no. Right. Well, and they'd also say things like, well, you'll, you won't remember but you won't forget either. <laughs> you know, I mean, they were they were jacking with me. I sure. mean, it, it almost sounded like I was talking to a, a smart ass comic or something. You know, because right. they were they were telling me things that, <clears throat> well, you weren't supposed to remember that. 
And they would never tell me when I guess something, they, they would rarely say yes, but they would go, you weren't supposed to remember that. Wow. How did you recall that? that yeah, and, or they would change the subject because they were giving me these screen memories, but they wore off over the years or they weren't done properly in the first place. Right. You know? But, you know, I was... I was taken uh, when I had a Sasquatch event in 2019 or 20 in Illinois, when I was leading an expedition for BFRO, uh, I had a connection with a clan. And one of the questions, the last regression, I said, you can ask me 12 questions and I'll get answers for you. They mentioned my Sasquatch research. Wow. They mentioned, we're aware of his work. We're aware of his work. That's what they kept saying when I, when she would ask him, have you been helping him or hindering him with his Sasquatch? We are aware of his work. He does good work. And th that's all that was said, but they, they were aware of my work. But right. when I made contact with a clan in 2020, uh, and this ties in, you know, the the next year I went back out there and met my friend Harold. You probably heard this story, and <clears throat> we just wanted to see if the vibe of this particular place, because where I took this group was the Trail of Tears in Murfreesboro, mm -hmm. and that's a place that nobody but nobody ever goes at night is it too much weird shit there's not a there's the the baddest mf in this whole town will not go anywhere near that place at night i said oh really well that's where i'm going for a spy work <laughs> that's where i'm going for my expedition because you can't tell me that and tell me not to go there so that's where we went <laughs> so <clears throat> we made contact it was a great expedition i went and met my friend harold well covid had hit at that time and so uh we were only going to stay for a day so i drove to Murfreesboro. We spent the night. We went down to the place where we had stopped. And it is the vibe was incredible. And then I found out more and more of the story about the uh, Trail of Tears. 94 Native Americans froze to death in that spot where we went that, on an expedition. Oh, wow. 94 people died waiting for the, the missionaries to get there to help them get to the Mississippi River, which is really just down the street from this area. Right. Uh, they never made it, you know. But at that point, the, you know, when we went back and the vibe felt great, you know, that's about time where I, I, I left a camera. I went back the next morning to get it and they left those rocks. Yeah. You told us about that. Yeah. yeah. It, it was incredible. Well, in 2021 or 22, I'm asleep in bed here at my house. And they, they signified by sending a blue orb to my house when I was yep. still in. Illinois. My wife saw it and she goes, what time did this happen? When, when you were in Illinois, what time? Uh, I don't know. It's probably sometime after dark. It's COVID and there's nobody out, but it's probably after 8 or 8.30. Right. 8 or 8.30, she's getting ready for bed here in Kansas City, Missouri. A blue orb comes flying into the bedroom, flies around a couple of times, goes into the bathroom and disappears. That's the exact time I made contact with this clan in Illinois. Wow. No way, shape, or form is it anything mm -hmm. other than that. That's what it was. So anyway, 2022, I'm laying in bed at night. It's 1 o'clock in the morning or so. Uh, I wake up, and I feel these little hands under my butt and my thigh and my leg. And they're taking me to the edge of the bed. I'm up off the bed, and they're, they're, dig they're trying to get their grip, whoever this is. And they're carrying me off the edge of the bed. And my wife gets up and goes to pee. And I'd say, Sheila, Sheila, what's going on? Do you see what's going on here? And she's like, ignores me. It's like, she doesn't hear me. It's like, I'm not wow. there. She's not there. They she goes her in, I'm watching her. It's like this. I'm watching her through a dirty window. The screen is dirty around the edge, but I can see very clear right here. And I'm watching. And, it, and as they're getting me to the edge of the bed, I'm going, Sheila, you got to come here. Come here. Tell me who, who this is. What's going on? She flushes the toilet. They drop me back on the bed. And she comes back in. She goes, What do you what do you what's wrong? What are you talking about? What are you doing? Well, do you see these 
there was somebody in here. Oh, no, you're just lucid dreaming. That's what she said. You're just lucid dreaming. But the hypnotist referred to that event. That was the ETs. They had come back to either do something to me or take me somewhere to do it to me somewhere else. Right. They, right. they verified that 2022, they were the ones that were in my bedroom, taking me God, out of bed. God, Carter, that's recent. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm an old fart. What do you want with me? What, you know? Yeah, go probe yeah, somebody fixed. else. I mean, geez, Lordy. Well, the, you know, yeah, I've been fixed. I can't have kids. I mean, you can't. <laughs> you know, here's, here's the thing they were using me for. They were preparing me for breeding. <laughs> me and my friend and my <laughs> other friend. They were getting rid for, uh, as they called it, melding or meshing hmm. with their species. Ooh. They uh, put me in a cocoon or like a seed pod. It was a kind of a weird thing. was... I was in this long, tall, it was like a seed pod. And I was in there and I couldn't get, I couldn't move much. I mean, I was kind of, kind of trapped in there. It was, it was, so I could not move around and I could hear them doing stuff to Craig. This is a different time. And they were, he was screaming bloody murder. I'm going, oh God, I, I, I got my hand up somehow and I started clawing at this material. <clears throat> so an alien came over and cut me out with a red laser. Mm, wow. cut me out of the thing and I fell on the floor and I was you know I was freaking out what are you doing to him I'm not going in there I, I, I was I was totally freaked and, and that's all I remember of that but they cut me out so I wouldn't but they had me isolated because they were making sure our biologies that's their word would mesh or meld together without any problem so they were making sure that I was free of their free of germs, yeah. and it, as they were free of germs on their side, so that they were preparing me, and I may have got a little Carter running around. I was I, just I, gonna say that. <laughs> I mean, I have yeah. no idea. Yeah, I have no idea. You know, because I can only un unlock so many things. There's still a whole bunch of things I don't know, but I can I can suppose because I've right. gotten this far with it. Now, here's the weird part. And, it, you know, I was born September 16th, 1951. My buddy Craig was born September 16th, 1951. My buddy Gordon was born September 16th, 1951. We all lived in the same freaking neighborhood. Wow. Wow. wow now, wow. if you're going to be doing experiments what better control group than to have three kids with the exact same birthday and they're the exact same age but it's perfect same build you know tall skinny scrawny texas boys yep you know i mean now i couldn't find craig i found seven craigs i won't say his last name mm -hmm. and i found one and uh he goes, no, I don't know you. I said, no, no, we went to school together. No, I went, I lived in Richardson, Texas. No, I, you know, I said, well, how would I know you, Craig? You and me lived in the same neighborhood. We burned down your parents' garage shooting down fireworks. And I was forbidden to play with you ever again. You were forbidden to play with me. Remember that? Yeah. No. I remember reading it in the book. Yeah. I'm talking about he, the track. He, yeah. he didn't. No, that, no, that, 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 well, have you been uh, hypnotized ever? And it got real quiet. Well, yeah, I've, I've tried it a couple of times, but I, I don't know if I believe in it or understood the science. I, I'm not sure it really worked. Hmm. Uh, I said, uh, well, Craig, your birthday is September 16th, 1951, isn't it? It got even quieter. <laughs> So I'm okay. talking to this guy who says he doesn't know me for 20 minutes. Now, if, if some kook calls you and say, I was abducted by aliens and you were taken with me, would you just hang up and say, hey, you got the wrong number? You know, nice, nice chat. But, you know, but 20 minutes we talked. Yeah. And I know I had the right guy. Yeah. 
who at random the the Craig the one Craig Whaley I pick out of the whole United States has mm. been hypnotically regressed and he's born on the same exact day as me. Wow. You know, and so I know deep in my heart that's him. He might still be under the effect of the screen memory. He may still not know or believe. He may not know anything. I was just going to ask or, you if you if you thought he they you know wiped him clean from your memory. You you know your memory his memory of you, you know, I I was yeah. thinking maybe they wiped that. Yeah, they could. And so he hung up and that was it. We talked about 20 minutes. And so I, I don't believe in coincidences. You know, you, this business, no. there's no coincidence in the things no. that you and I, all, no. the, we do. It's just nothing in there. No. So Did he ever admit to uh, knowing you? No. He said, I lived in Richardson, Texas, which is about 20 miles from me. Oh, man. But I, it was him. I know him. Unless Craig Rayleigh, uh, Craig was a screen memory. Ah. I didn't think about it like else. that. Okay. But how did I find the guy with the same birthday? You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it just, right. You know, and even Gordon, the other kid. Now, we hung around more than Craig. We were like buddies. We we hunted and fished. We were known as the Nature Boys, one and two. We I had snakes, and I was going to be a herpetologist before I got into cryptozoology. So I, you know, but... I only hear from him every now and then, like when somebody dies we went to school with. I got an email mm -hmm. as I was finishing this book, literally. I got an email. Hey, remember Larry? He died. You know, Larry McBride, he died. And I just want to let you know. Cause, you know, I, I, I hear from him like one every five years. Yeah. That's all he does is to email me to let me know somebody died. Mm -hmm. Well, he doesn't have a Facebook page. So I, I sent him a long email explaining and outlining everything that I just told you. I haven't heard back from it. Probably won't. And how long has it been since you? Oh, it's uh, November, December. Okay. He, you know, he may have to be, and maybe he doesn't remember it either. Here's yeah. the weird part. Investigators like you and I, male and female, have contacted me, all telling me they remember a phantom pregnancy, being floated in and out of their window from their bedroom into a craft. And if I told you some of these people, you'd go, you're kidding. You you, you, you guys both know them. Yeah. Several, several know of them. I, I know I, a few I, of them I, you're I, talking about. I know. Yeah. You, you may or may not, but I'm not going to say their name because I, I, I nope. said I would. But they all got my book and they have all been seeking hypnotists. And I've been sending them links to the to the right people to use. So there's people that you and I know mm -hmm. in the business. I'm talking about Sasquatch or yeah. cryptid in general. Yeah. Three women, two guys. Wow. Say don't share, don't say anything. But I, you know, and one of them has a uh, a twin, and they were both taken. Ah. One okay. refuses to talk about it or even acknowledge it. The other one's like, I'm dying to get to the bottom of this. If you're not going to talk about it, then at least sit in the session with me. Right. And, and, and watch and make sure I don't freak out or mention anything. The only thing I tell them is, is make sure you get regressed in person, not uh, online. You yeah, over do it in person because they got to feel the vibes, see your twitch and your body twitches and yeah, things like There's that. Something but, missing uh, over the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but that's that's how I got to this point. It, it is just bizarre. And there's people sitting here watching this right now. Somebody's going, "Oh my god!" I mean, somebody is. They're, "Oh my yeah. god!" That's that sounds like what I've been. Telling my husband all these years, mm -hmm. you know, for sure. It, yeah. it could have been our military under the guise of ETs. I'm hearing things now where, at a certain stage, the ETs quit abducting us and they turned it back over to the the military, our military. 
who are doing experiments and trying to perfect the medicine and the medical techniques that they have learned from the ETs. And, uh, you know, this is just a whole other can of worms. But, you know, there's people I had no idea. Carter, my God, you, you got to tell you know, get, I need a book. I mean, this is, you know, they're just, they're freaking out because this, this speaks to people. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, one of you guys could have been taken. You, you wouldn't have any idea. You know, it's just, it, it just, a, it turned my life around. And so when I was finishing the book, October of last year, November, when I got back from my last regression in October here with the last person, she validated everything and then piled it on. And when I was listening to all the tapes again, I finally decided I got to put this in a book. I'm just going to leave it for my family so they'll know how come I'm so weird. <laughs> That's what I was going to do. I was just going to leave it in a book. And and I transcribed it all from the digital, uh, the the electronic, the, the cassette tape. I had to buy a special little cassette player yeah. adapter. And uh, so I transcribed it all from cassette onto a Word document. Then I transcribed the words into something more readable because, you know, there's a lot of background noise. And it's, anyway, so I came out with the book. And, uh, but people are like, that's exactly what happened to me. I mean, it, so many people were sitting on this kind of stuff. Sure. You know, and they have nowhere to turn. What are you going to do? Yeah. I don't know what to tell them. I mean, you know, get regressed and find out, you know, but it's bizarre to know that your life and the memories you had have been interrupted or adjusted by. Yeah, that's kind of disturbing in a way. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know what part of me is, you know, <clears throat> real or, or not. I don't know if I still have an implant. I just had COVID and I lost hearing in one ear, which I've got back. Oh. I was hoping when they were digging around in there, they may find I, have, it. I have tubes in one ear, this right ear. Okay. And I was hoping uh, when I lost my hair, they would find something. But mm -hmm. I know they put the implant in up my nose because the other one came out of my nose. Wow. Did you lose yeah. sense of taste when you had uh, COVID? Uh, no. No. Oh. No. Pretty good. I had a horrible cough that would not go away. I, I had the cough for almost six months. I got COVID in August of last year. And it just wow. went away that eh, January, part of February. It's just this weird cough, you know. Of course, it really turns a lot of people off, but, you know, because uh, you're coughing all the time. There's nothing there. It's just a cough. Yeah. So, yeah, I never, uh, I had, I had no memories of anything consciously until I went under. And, you know, what's ironic is that I was doing a conference and my, uh, my booth was next to Travis Walton. You know who Travis Walton is. Oh, yeah. Fire uh, in the sky. Yeah. Yeah. We got to talking. It was kind of slow because you know, we were both speakers at this conference. And uh, he said, uh, I told him my story. He goes, what the hell are you waiting for? Tell the world. You're telling everybody about Sasquatch. You want everybody to tell you their story about what, what are you waiting for? Well, I, I don't really know. I, I, I'm not sure this really happened. But I've got seven tapes up here that tell me. <laughs> it did yeah. happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, they sat in my closet for 20 freaking years. I stare at them because my desk is facing my closet. It's up there with my, my DNA and microscopes and stuff for a Sasquatch research. It's up there wow. with all that stuff. I don't use a whole lot uh, of the time. They right. just sit there. I'll get to it next week, next year, next month, next decade. They sat here for 20 years. I didn't do anything with them. I, wow. I, you know, and I, I really, I cannot tell you to this day why I didn't do anything. I mean, it was just, it's just bizarre. And they wow. all told me, listen to these tapes over and over and over. Every one of them told me, you'll remember something that you totally forgot. You'll hear something you, you, you forgot. 
Every time you listen, you learn something new. I didn't do that. I just left them up there. I think I was afraid. I'm not afraid to admit I was afraid. I don't know, really want to know because I'm usually an action guy. I don't yeah. know why those things sit there. Except I had to have been concerned that uh, something might be wrong with me. I mean, I may, I may right. play these back and go, well, I've got to get my will out and make sure things all up to, you know, I mean, I, I didn't know. I really had no excuse. I had no reason other than I was afraid of what I was going to hear. And I, at the end, because I was also just getting my Sasquatch research going at that time. <clears throat> so I think I was kind of concerned that that might sidetrack me if I started looking into this. So I just didn't do anything. And But once I did it and I listened to the last tape, the last time before I decided to write, I went in there with my wife. And I fell into her arms and I sobbed. I cried for 20 minutes. I can't believe it's, I mean, I was just a mess. I couldn't believe it was real. Then I, I said, yeah. I, it is real. I mean, I, I was hoping someone would say, well, you, you took too much acid back in the 60s. You, you have a trip, <laughs> you know. I, I was thinking, you know, they might tell me something that there would be a reason for me <clears throat> hallucinating these things. But no, I it really happened. It's just mind-boggling it you know the ets look like everything from uh outer limits uh david faulkner oh, man from uncle he had that terrible. big head he was that big headed monster that big headed alien that is it, the head was like super bulbous had a bunch of veins okay yep that was one of the ets i was speaking to now that could have been a screen memory because that was already in my memory banks as a kid because that was one of as my kids. favorite shows. But right. this one was talking through that David McCollum uh, character, talking to me and telling me things, wow. or misdirecting me. Well, I'm not sure how you remembered that. We'll have to get back to you on that one. I mean, you know, I, I was asking questions and they were like coming right out and answering some of them and BSing me on the others, which means right. I was getting too close to something they didn't want me to, to know. Sure. You know, but, you know, I may still have an implant. I have no idea. Uh, I was taken, I was taken to Machu Picchu. I was taken to the rings of Saturn. Uh, they were going to leave me there. And I didn't want to go. And they said, well, I asked to go. I said, well, no, I didn't. I don't want to hang out with it. They wanted me to go visit these old souls that live in the rings of Saturn. I don't want to live in the rings of Saturn. I'm a kid. I want to have fun. So I don't want to go there. I don't want to stay there. So bring me back. And they brought me back. I remember being in the rings of Saturn and seeing the debris flying by me, little bricks and chunks of rock and, and wow. planet and asteroids and dust and just, just stuff flying by me. I would go, God, what? But it, it wasn't, none of it was touching. It was all like going around me. It would not touch me. It was like it none of it was bouncing off of me. It was like going around me. You know, it was just, it was a bizarre thing. Uh, went to Machu Picchu. Apparently there's a, uh, an entire complex underneath there. Wow. Uh, like they allege is uh, in the pyramids. Right. And I was walking on this floor that had spongy, mossy flooring. It was bizarre. It, you know, but it just, to find that out, it's it 53, 52 when I found out, I mean, you live your whole life and you have a whole other life that you led and you don't know anything about it. Mm. Yeah. It's crazy. You don't know how it influenced you. You don't know what decisions you may have made or may have not made had this not happened. You, you know, not, you know, I have had a fabulous life. I have no complaints about my life. I've, I've done things that nobody else should be able to do, but I've done them. You know, I've been a, mm -hmm. I was a rock drummer for 20 years. I was a comic for three years. I chased Sasquatch through the, you know, the forest at night, three o'clock in the morning. I'm not scared of nothing. Why would I be scared of these tapes in my closet? I don't know. No, but so it, it's just bizarre that you find that out in a late stage of life. Yeah. And you go, well, I wonder why that happened. I wonder what, you know, it just makes you, you, you know, put things in your pipe and smoke it uh, for different reasons. You have to look at your life differently. You know, uh, some of these women that had pregnancies, they were impregnated, you know, uh, all right, we're getting close on time. Are we okay? Yeah. yeah. We're good. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, the ET gestation, according to many, yeah. is around four months. Well, they can implant you with a, a clone being, a, a human alien hybrid, mm -hmm. and come back and get it from the women in four months. Wow. And they're taking they can, those big vats you see, and then they mature into their full grown, you know, the little grays or whatever. Wow. They're using our DNA because there's something they're missing that we have. We have a soul. We have feelings for others. Yeah. And they don't necessarily have that. Some do, some don't. Right. And we have conscious, you know, feelings of guilt or innocence, things we will or won't do because we know it hurts somebody. Their robotic life is just we're going to do something it would hurt somebody oh well because we have to do this you know they yeah. don't think about you know, we have the things the sensitivities and the sensibilities they don't have and that's right. why why else would you do a, a hybrid a human alien hybrid what could possibly be the reason we have something they want yeah i think with you right on the money with it what you just said with DNA, I think that's they, that makes they, total they sense. Would generally, keep the baby, or would they let it go to term here on Earth? They keep the baby. They go live on another planet. All Every right. now and then, the mother will be taken <clears throat> and shown their baby or young daughter. Well, they'll show them as a teenager or a ten-year-old kid, but they are just different. You know, they look like human. They have slightly bigger eyes. They're very pale in complexion, mostly are blonde. And they're skinny and wispy. Uh, but you can tell they're not a visitor. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we have something they want. And I think it's feelings and personality because they don't have that type of relationship with one another. Yeah. And that may or may not be something they truly miss and wish they had and they don't right now i don't know that but that that's something i feel and it's something that sure. others told me yeah that we have something they want why would they keep coming here yeah, it makes sense why you like said why would they keep coming Take we should be going to them place. and cloning them because we got stuff that we want interstellar travel we want right no more mcdonald's we want you know we want to eat good we want you know whatever they have things we should want right but it's the other way around. They're coming to us for something. Yeah. And, you know, the uh, the theory is that in the 50s, Eisenhower and Truman made a deal with the devil that they made a, a, a contract. You can take our humans, do what you need, and you give us the uh, technology. Yeah, I've heard that. Yep. You probably heard it more than once because it, it probably is. The, oh, yeah. It, it probably yep. is. The heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. You take the humans. Try not to hurt them, and but give us the technology so we can be uh, the uh, true superpower on the planet. We've taken their technology, and you know the only reason we heard about the Tic Tacs at all is because they monetized and weaponized and politicized every piece of technology to the extent that they can, the humans, I mean. And so, well, let's go ahead and admit, because now that it's coming out, we can't hide this stuff anymore. So now they threw us a bone. And that was that, what, four years ago? And now they've shut up and they're not telling us anymore. You know? Right. So, right. But, you know, they're, once they've used, got everything they know they can get out of it. And it's the same with Sasquatch. There's something they don't want us to know. They're not a dumb yeah. ape. If they were only a dumb ape, I've said this, and every, you, every one of you guys has said it too. If it's just a dumb ape, what's the big deal? Right. Oh, well, there's a dumb ape that, you know, there's an undiscovered North American ape that's running amok in the woods. That is just freaking awesome. Tell yeah. the world that is cool. That is an incredible right. scientific, you know, achievement to discover that there might be a relative of a man. But what's the big deal? Let's give them some protected area and leave them alone. Yeah, right. They got exactly. skills we don't have. And that's Absolutely. why we oh, <laughs> that's why, you know, you know that, I know that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh uh so that's my thing in a nutshell. I'm selling this book for 30 bucks. That includes five bucks for shipping. It's a really, really 
it's just meat and potatoes. It's my regressions, mm -hmm. all seven of them, chapter by chapter. The Lord, I mean, it it just it spits it all out. Now, you know, everybody that has bought this book has related to it in some way, shape, or form. And that's scary yeah. in and of itself. I've been, I'm about, like I told you, I'm about halfway through it, and some things are hitting close to home. Oh, yeah. yeah. Isn't it, 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 and so what do you do with that? Exactly. You know, <laughs> I mean, just how many humans have been taken and have no idea? Right. More than we yeah. think. Yeah, more than we think. And we're still here. Yeah. They brought me back because, well, I'm, I'm so good looking. They thought you should be a movie. So we're not going <laughs> to, we're going to leave you on, uh, we're going to leave you on planet earth. You don't want to go to uh, Saturn or, or Saturn. Uranus, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I'm, sorry. Yeah. I'm, throwing, I'm throwing some light, light humor in there, but it, it's a serious topic, you know. No, yeah, it, without a doubt. Just, once you realize that you, I can't, do anything about it i can't undo it i can't sit here and feel sorry for myself because i really i don't feel sorry for myself i feel stupid for letting it sit there for 20 years and doing nothing you know but um uh, you know ed mong ed mongi yeah yeah, yeah. Hey. We both do. well yeah. he's uh we're gonna do a, a little short film on my thing right nice and i think he's doing something with uh nate yeah he finished with nate yeah he's yeah. Got you up next, and then he's gonna contact me in uh, June. Yeah, we're, we're gonna do yeah, something he's, there. He's uh, a good guy. I think good Moorhead's guy. in there. I think Ron Moorhead's in there. Too. Extremely professional guy. Yes, I mean, he is. he's really good guy. He's top notch. Uh, we're we're speaking with a, a producer on Wednesday. He and I we're speaking with his his actual producer. Uh huh. And Very so cool. we're, we're setting something up to do something here uh, in June. You know, we've Very got cool. about everything put together. The, the really hard part is uh, getting a couple of 11 or 12 year old boys to play the parts of myself. Play the parts. Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, mostly, well, if you know, there's a lot of uh, negative garbage with some of these uh, talent agencies that want a piece of the action. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they didn't use, because I, 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 I did co TV commercials for 10, 15 years. I was part of that. They never started going in the back door and trying to get, you know, oh, you're going to shop this around for a big movie deal? Well, we want a, we want a piece of this. So we're not going to provide piece of it. Yeah. Okay, well, screw you. We'll find somebody else. Yeah, we'll find another company that'll, you know, cooperate. Yeah, probably. or we'll find somebody, you know, a, a friend of mine with a 10-year-old boy that can ride a bike and look like he almost got run over by a, a, a spacecraft is all you got to do. And you get some good money for that little kid. So uh, anybody got a 10 to 12-year-old kid, give me a call. You know what you do? <laughs> you know what you do if you know any parents? You know, go to a local uh, middle school and see if they have a, uh, you know, acting classes over the there. Yeah. And... Sure as heck. I mean, I I, I know in uh, the high schools when they do those the theatrical programs, a yeah. lot of those kids aspire to uh, to go to theater or to the movie. So you never know. Yeah. You might come across a couple of boys that way. Yeah, I've thought about that. And, Especially you know, from your state, you know, because they would have the same accent and yeah, you know, all about yeah. The same things. That'd be yeah. great. No, it's, you know, it, it's that's that's come to my attention because I was supposed to go teach an improv class at, at the high school here about five years ago. They asked me to come teach an improv class. I just yeah. couldn't get my schedule to work. Uh, but it was, you know, because I was an improv comic for years. So I, I could talk to a couple of kids. Yeah. So that's on the list. We've just now come to this realization that the talent agencies are getting really greedy and they don't care about God. Things they used to. It's not the same. Mm, no. Well, we're speaking to his uh, producer on uh, Wednesday. We're doing a Zoom call. And it's so all about the we, money. They want to make money on it. And, but there's a lot of talent agencies out there that you can go to that will oh, yeah. you know, that'll just want to make the money off their client, and that's it. Let it stop there. But yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> we are running out of time. But before we go, I wanted to ask any uh, anything new in the Bigfoot world for you? Anything going on? Uh, yes, I just, uh, well, I just wrote the book, but, uh, three days ago, you know, uh, Lon Strickler, mm -hmm. 
Okay. He sent me a family out of a, a certain state mm -hmm. that has had Sasquatch banging on the house, possibly dog man. I've got a picture that is not a Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. I may send it to you guys and let you look. Don't share it. But No, of course not. But uh, <clears throat> I've got his permission to, but I haven't wiped the uh, geodata off of it. All his photos have the geodata, so I either got to yeah, yeah. clinicize them and get them all cleaned up so there's no way of tracking it. But right. uh, the one, there's a, a, a creature standing next to a tree, and they don't have bear in Indiana. Right. And this looks like a bear, except it's not a bear. It's got a big long it, snout. Uh, yeah. uh, it, it's the clearest thing that I've gotten. Seen, yeah. You know, and he did have a Sasquatch. You know, he, he's got a Sasquatch looking at his window, maybe holding a baby. He's got uh, some other who knows what. But uh, it's it's a very active site, and I got some really cool pictures. So I may I send I may send them to you guys, especially since you have more uh, dogman activity than I do, because we just don't have them down here, you know, in Missouri. Yeah, yeah. they're not reported. They may be reported as Sasquatch or something else, but you know, right. Well, that's the hottest thing I got going right now. But you know, that that's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's pretty darn good though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was that was awesome, people, Carter. People calling me every week. I get somebody every week. Got your number from, saw a podcast, saw, you know, I can't let anybody know. I, I, I we're, we're, we got Sasquatch or something running all over our property. And I, I get them one a week, every couple of weeks. It's crazy. Right. It's, I'm starting to ruffle a little feathers there or getting, getting some activity where people are starting to tell everybody, call this guy. You got something going on, call him, you know, yeah. you know, because, you know, I'm not going to share your name. I'm not going to share your location just your story because to somebody right. else is having this event right now they're going through the same thing you went through five years ago and they just haven't told anybody because they don't want to get made fun of you know you exactly know. Yeah. yeah absolutely so absolutely it's an ongoing revolving door of material information coming i'll send this one i'll send this photo to you guys i don't have any video from him yet just a photo All right. I'll send this one photo that is obviously something and i don't think it's a sasquatch yeah, yeah. you can look and tell me what you think yeah that'd be cool oh, we don't definitely yeah uh carter how can paint chip as soon as i get off of my butt here uh Nick, <laughs> I'll that paint chip for you i know i've got it out in the garage okay uh, uh carter how can people get a hold of you if they have any questions regarding the, the uh, like a sasquatch <clears throat> situation uh you can go to my website sqexplorer.com and you can email me from there or my email address is sqexplorer at gmail.com you can order the books from me there you can order the books you can ask questions about anything I'll I don't ignore you I call you back I email you back I'll, I'll get in touch with you you know if you want to buy the books uh, if you want to buy all four Sasquatch books I'll give you a special price on all four at once uh, it's still it's still pretty cheap. It's a lot cheaper yeah. than that. You know, so and they're full recommended color, they're reading. They're full color. They're nice books. Awesome, awesome material too. So I encourage yeah. anyone out there listening to grab Carter's books. I've read every one of them, and they're they're great. Yeah, but they thanks again, Carter. Stuff. They make make good doorstops too. If you get you know, <laughs> right? Oh, I got them <laughs> back there. Like I said in the beginning of the show, I use them as references. So I mean, there's there's always something you can grab out of it. Yeah, I appreciate you know that. Something and I don't don't have enough info. I I've got that to go to. You're almost like my uh, Encyclopedia Britannica for Sasquatch. <laughs> Would you call me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Carter, uh, hang around for about five minutes after after I uh, stop okay. record, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, and everybody, uh, thanks again to Carter. It was amazing. Thanks for telling that story. It was awesome. Great, Carter. It's yeah. always a pleasure having you on, Carter. Always. Pleasure to be um, here. Always, guys. You're my friends. Always learn. Ditto. Um, and if you need to get a hold of Nick and I, or uh, you can easiest way to reach us is on Facebook Messenger. If you have any uh, questions about, you know, the dogman phenomenon, Sasquatch, 
phenomenon. Check out our IDP groups, uh, International Dogman Project groups, uh, on the trail in search of uh, on the trail Crimson Paranormal Research Group, and check out our YouTube channel. It's got all our shows for all six seasons. It's Paranormal Encrypted Crossroads Research. So check it out, and uh, we will be back next week with another good guest for you. Everyone, be good to each other. God bless. Have a good evening. Good night. Yeah.